So today, by the desire and the divine blessings of Gurudev, we would start a series on the Prema Bhakti Chantrika, listening about the prayers of Srila Narottam Das Thakur Mahashai. Srinara Thomas Thakur was born shortly after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had left the planet and he was known, he became very, very famous because of his heart touching bhajans. These bhajans were so simple that everyone could feel them and they were written and expressed in simple Bengali language. But at the same time, all the treasure of our Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy, not only philosophy, Bhaja, the secret, secret feelings of all the steps that we go in our spiritual life were revealed by him. So I know, Gurudev, you always like to go step by step in the songs, to go with every word. So if you give me the blessings, I will do that. I was thinking if we should start with the whole biography. But then I thought, no, it is good if it comes step by step with his songs, with his meditations, and with his blessings. Yeah. If in, your, in our last uh, talk, you said that Narathon Das Thakur is not different from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is like his Dasi Anandasi. And also empowered to be the teacher that he became after Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Prabhu, left and went in the Nitya Lila and became unmanifest here on this planet. So the Prima Bhakti Chandrika starts with these two prayers, Amagyana, Timirandasya. Gyananjana Shalakaya Shakshurum Militam Yena Tasmai Shiguravi. I was born in the darkest blindness. I was I am blind. I was born because I had this body. I still have this body and I'm still blind. I have not developed my inner eyes. And I'm praying to Shri Guru that this comes, that my darkness will dissipate and the light of the love, the Sri Radha, will prevail. This, all the fogs of the ego and the mind will disappear. And Narottam Dasaku is singing in Sri Guru Charanapaka. And the lotus feet of Sri Guru, this is where the treasure is. This is where the secret jewels, the chintamanis, they are no material jewels. They are the chintamanis. They are the real jewels for the heart's desire to completely surrender in loving service to Sri Radha. So, I will also go step by step with the commentary of Srila Ananda Das Maharaj, who was so kind to also leave his footsteps and his footprints in the form of his commentary and his beautiful explanations and his treasure house of Bhaja, which we are by the guidance of Gurdiv also. 
learning how to relish slowly but surely we will reach the ultimate goal. <laughs> So please, if you um, if you want, then please share something or also give commentary if you feel inspired. And Guruji, please guide me and also cut my words if I say something wrong. What inspired me very much in this first uh, explanation of Srila Anandas Babaji Maharaj, he said that these songs and prayers are revealed in very simple and concise Bengali language. And hence the most valuable and essential instructions are here. They reside, truly, truly reside here. But one must try to understand these greatly realized teachings with the support of the great grace of the great saints and as far as possible with the aid of one's own realizations on Pacha. So this is a very nice um, hint and advice that we need another great saint, we need another guru, another Vaishnava, another sadhu that will give the grace to understand the, these greatly realized songs. And also try myself to be absorbed. When I sing the songs, I try to remember and I try to connect with the feelings of Naraton Dastakur. I try to feel his feelings or if I have heard a lot of things about his identity, I try to connect with this Manjari who has come to please Ananga Manjari and Rupa Manjari and Radhika with her services. So we see it from the perspective of Sadhana, then we have the Sadaka and we are following his Sadhana. He is so much absorbed in the holy names. Why? Because he is Champaka Manjari. She is a divine eternal servant and she has come to help us to also come into this deep relish of the service to Shirana. Mm. Saniti, that means because because she or he knows who she is, he is she, <laughs> uh, she is fixed in the service, in the sadhana, in the bhajan. No? Yes. So, and because of this, we can learn from them. Now, we have to learn from self realized souls. And this is what you say, that he is a self-realized soul. And because of this, we can learn from them how to behave. No? Yes. So she, as a manjari, is fixed. Now, others maybe try to teach, but they are maybe not fixed. So we have to be careful to whom we listen, right? It should be always a self-realized soul, like Navatam Das Thakur. And uh, when I listen to you, then I see also his fruits. 
These are the songs. His fruits are the songs he wrote from the bottom of his heart. And this is only possible in the self-realized soul in a relationship to a fixed Ishtadev. And so, and Guru Nishta also. Both are there. So this is what we have to see in our teachers if we like to growing in our own sadhana and bhajan. They can teach us to find the real goal. And this is beautiful to see the songs of Narottam Dastakur. He is our real teacher and we can learn so much from him. So he is our Authorized, Authorized Mandari. Authorized Mandari. Marked Mandari. <laughs> yeah, like that. So, Sri Guru Charana Padma, in the beginning of his book, Srila Thakur Mahashoy glorifies the principle of Sri Guru who is the root cause of all accomplishment of sadhana. So the root cause, the root, the mool. We're having our Vija mantras, no? the root of all our growth is the mercy of Shiguru. And that's why it is so, it's the beginning and the end for, for me. I mean, sorry, Gurudev, I know you don't like to hear it. But the Sri Guru principle is so important because Sri Guru is the servant of Sri Radhika. I don't have any direct realization of Sri Radhika, but I, Gurudev, he has helped me. She has helped me. I can do some service to her. And I hope that she will take me to the service of Sri Radhika, surely and slowly. So the root cause, I mean, it's also meditating about roots, because at the same time, we have a summer season here. And I love gardening, so I am a lot in the garden. If you have a plant, like our Bhakti Lata Beach is also the plant of our devotion, the plant of our desire to grow into also the Dasi, who we are. We need to nourish the roots. This plant will not grow if the roots are neglected. Because the roots is giving all the juice, is giving all the nourishment from the earth. In the earth, there's many things, but the roots take the water and the nourishment of all the good ingredients that is needed that the plant can grow and the plant will have nice flowers and from the flowers there will be nice fruits. So if the root is not flourished and nourished, Something will be missing, and you can see it on the plant, right? Sometimes we look at the roses and they get these yellow leaves, and we are worried. Oh, oh, I hope that there's nothing wrong. Does the plant need some more water? Does the root have enough space? So here we can see the root cause of all accomplishment of sadhana is Sri Guru Charana Padma. But Sundari, do you have also garden? This experience in the garden? <laughs> Rati, very Rati. small garden. Just very small. small. <laughs> but this, your plants also has roots? I was thinking about if they have uh, enough space. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <I'm not> sure. <laughs> it's a good meditation <laughs> also for us. Yes. To care about ourselves. True. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Often we are more right. careful with others than with ourselves. 
<laughs> yeah, true. So. Yeah, maybe we, we try to look after other plants, but if the plant of my bhakti is not having enough juice for the root, means the feelings, the affection for Shiguru is the root cause of all accomplishment of sadhana. Maybe I am not qualified, but my guru, my guru Mandrani, my Gurudev is qualified. So she will also give nourishment to the roots of my bhakti. If I connect and if I drink from the lotus mouth what they have to share from their bhajan. Like Srila Ananda Das Babaji, he says that we need the own listening from some great saint who is helping in, in their realization. So, and plus my own endeavors for bhajan and sadhan, what I can do. Of course, we need the mercy. We need the mercy from ourselves that we take the time to do our homework. We take the time for gardening our Bhakti Lata beach. And also, we need the mercy of Shiva. And a big space. Big space. What do you say, Patsune? A big space? Because if the juice is coming, then there we need a, a big pot. Because then the growing starts. When the Rasa is coming, and then the, the pot has to be big enough to carry all this juice, what is coming. <laughs> the rain of mercy and this, uh, yes, this, this uh, feelings, what are creating. If, if this rasa, this juice is not coming, then something is wrong and it will dry up. Mm -hmm. We have many experience of, of drying up. Uh, so, this is uh, one uh, we have to watch how much juice is coming that the plant can grow more and that more is it growing as more juice is coming. So, <laughs> what do you say? So, the, the, we need enough space uh, in our gardening and in the pot. In the pot of, <laughs> of the heart. If we see the heart is the container of the plant of bhakti, and then when the juice is coming, the water, the rain of mercy, the, the roots are growing, you know. And this growing is also that Shri Guru is becoming more prominent in my life. Relation with Shri Guru is more prominent. And relation with Swamini. Yeah, because she is a Dasi, so she will con connect us. The roots will connect and then there's more flowers coming. Yes. And these flowers that Shiguru is taking also from our bhakti plant and offering to Swam. So this is like cooperation. Yes, but the main point is always the fixed goal. And this is what we get from the Guru. The, the fixed goal is our Swamini in our case. And the rasa we can taste is when we see the goal in the connection of Krishna. Then the juice is coming, rasa, drops of rasa. And we will enjoy this, right? We will serve also, because Radha and Mohan, they are in the rasa, they are in the bar, and the matris, the little servants, we will want to serve this, that our own roots are very strong. And then when the roots are strong, then this plant becomes unshakable. I remember like Gauravani was telling in the last German Zoom uh, that uh, I think it was, now we have so many Zooms, I get mixed up. <laughs> but he told that first we are like the blade of black grass. We have to be humble. We don't know where the you know where, where our life is going. We have to be completely surrendered to Swamini's and Shiguru's arrangement. We are helpless, and then also we have to become like the tree. 
And he gave this example that the tree is rooted very strongly and standing there. And if you cut me or if you take the fruits and the leaves, I am fixed in my devotion to you, Swamini. I will always be your Darcy, whether you cut me, whether there's a lot of rain and mercy, or whether there's some dry times where I don't feel any think so much because I am maybe so covered by my Mahabhutas. Ne? Good, if you wanted us to mention the Mahabhutas, these, these different, different obstacles in bhakti, this uh, principle of enjoyment, the senses, this anger, this lust. And what is lust? It's not only like having a desire to go with another person to enjoy the senses. Lust is also, in general, the desire to control. I want it my way. And if it does not happen my way, then you can go to the highway, <laughs> get lost. <laughs> so all these uh, Mahabhutas, these ghosts, Gurudev calls them ghosts, of our uh, obstacles, they have to be somehow overcome by the mercy of Shigur and our own endeavors. So here, uh, Ananda Das Babaji continues, In all scriptures, devotion to the personality of Godhead is said to be the ultimate goal and main purpose of human lives. And the scriptures and great saints are similarly of the opinion that devotional practice cannot be commenced without taking shelter at the feet of a bona fide guru. So we know also that the most important and first process in bhakti is Shri Guru Pada Shraya, to take the shelter of the lotus feet of Shri Guru. So this is a very deep, very deep uh, subject. It is not at all that I take initiation or I take the mantras and then, bye-bye, Shiguru, thank you for praying, thank you for your blessings. Sometimes I give a donation, thank you, thank you. No, this is a very external or formal understanding of Shiguru. We don't want to just receive like a fruit of, you know, activities. Oh, I give you some Dakshina, I give you some... Uh, of my uh, dandavats and you pray for me, you bless me. No, we want a personal relationship. And then these roots of our Bhakti Lata Beach become very strong. And then when the roots are more strong, then the water, the nectar can flow inside of our whole being. Means we can realize more and more who we are. First we realize that we are not this body and not these senses. And then we come to our essential, eternal being. Who am I if I am not this body? So then we come to the level of Swarup. What is my eternal service? Please, Gurudev, you are already there in this connection. To Swamini, please pray for me. And I want to have really a close relationship with you. And please, can I do some services? Not only external, but can we meet inside? Can we be so close that our eternal relationship will reveal?
So the lotus feet of Sri Guru are the treasure house of unalloyed Prima Bhakti. And I worship these lotus feet with great care. I take care. I become personal. Caring. How are you, Gurudev? Can I serve you? And we remember, Narottam Dostakwa, he also wanted to have the mercy of his Gurudev, and it was not so easy. His Gurudev is Lokanath Goswami, and he, he was such a Bhajananandi, he was always absorbed in his innocence. He didn't even have a desire to have a disciple, but by the mercy of Nityananda and Gauranga, who appeared to him and who were guiding Narada to go to him and serve him, Lokanath Maharaj, Lokanath Goswami's heart was melting. Narada Nastaka was doing very, very menial and deep hearted service. What he did was that he cleaned the place where Lokanath Goswami would go every day in the jungle of Vrindavan and do his daily toilet. And there, unseen by anyone, Narata would hide. And in the night, he cleans the place. And then when Lokanath Goswami was noticing that somebody is cleaning this place, every day I come here, it looks so neat and sweat. Who is doing this? Then his heart was melting and he found out that this is not a time. He wants to assist you. He wants to be of any little service. And when Sri Guru is seeing that disciple is completely selfless, doesn't want to do anything big, wants to be very small, and is helpless what to do. It was not so easy to start the Gurus at that time. They had just a little hut and they were having their bhaja. And then for prasad, they would go to Madhukari. They would just go from house to house to any bridge basi. And then what's it? And for bathing, they go in the Jamuna or in wherever they would live, so how to serve them. But Naratam Dastaku had this great idea, I want to, I will hidingly clean his toilet place. And not only doing it hidingly quickly, no, after he did it, that is explained, he was kissing the broom. So very much deep 
realization of, of Guru Seva is here. Taking shelter at the feet of Shikuru, taking initiation from him in Sri Krishna Mantra, receiving instructions in the service of the Lord and faithfully serving Guru. These three are the first and foremost gateways to the path of devotion. So we have taken shelter, we have taken initiation. Have we received instructions what service we should do? And if we have received the instructions, are we serving in this way? Therefore, as one enters the gate of the temple of devotion, one must first of all take shelter of the feet of Sri Guru. For one who is not devoted to the feet of Sri Guru is deprived of devotion or attain, attaining the Lord's grace. Just as water turns into ice when it is frozen and thus increases its quality of coldness, similarly, when the grace of the Lord becomes dense, condensed or intense, it becomes manifest before the devotee in the form of Sri Guru to cool the heart of the devotee who is afflicted by the threefold material as a misery with a stream of bhajan rasa, blessed with the relish of loving the Lord's lotus feet. So here we can also hear that Sri Guru is not only taking service, he's so, she is giving service, she is actually very important to console and to go with us the way. He is the navigation, but also in the times of, you know, difficulties and in the times of coldness. And therefore, I will take care that these lotus feet of Sri Guru are very close and always in my heart and I want to fully embrace the lotus feet and then something can happen that the mercy of the lotus feet of Sri Guru will bring me to the lotus feet of Sri Dana and connect me and there some other services are waiting. And the services that we do in this world will merge, will become one with the service to Srimati Radhika. Like I do anything here that I try to please Sri Guru. He will transform, she will transform me to the lotus feet of Sri Radha. Radhiradi, is anybody having any inspirations that they would like to share? Gurdiv, are you there with us? No. Radhe Radhe Sumiti. Radhe Sundaram. Radhe Radhe. Uh, I just like to know 
what uh, you are reading now? Uh, what uh, what book you are reading? Or oh, I'm reading. Yes. Oh, good. I'm still sleeping. Wow, sweet. I'm reading uh, Shri Shri Prema Bhakti Chandrika. You see? Ah, good. Okay, I have it. Yeah. You have it, no? Yeah. And this book actually is by Narottam Das Thakur, all his prayers and all his songs. And it is with the commentary of Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Pat and Srila Ananta Das Babaji Maharaj. It's very nice because it's good. That is our this is our Bhagavad Gita for Raganuga Bhakti also entrance into Manjari Bhav, into the feelings of Manjari. He mentioned all these three books, uh, they belong together. There's like a order. We start with Prima Bhakti Chantrika, then we go to Radha Ras Sudanidi, and then we go to Vilapa Kushmani. I got this version this yeah, year. Yeah, this is the same, the same, but it's in the heartbound. And before these books came, we had only this. This is the same book. Yeah. Uh, and what Tripadi you are reading now? Uh, this is, I think, the introduction. My introduction. Yeah. It was first in the beginning is the is this uh, life story and then comes uh Omagyanati Mirandasya and Sri Chaitanya Manubistam and then starts the Sri Guru Charana Padma. Because this book is containing actually it, it's only a, a coming uh, from uh, the songs and the explanation of the songs. And Gurudev's desire was that we go through all the songs and go through all the feelings of the songs. Okay, then we will sing a little bit more of the Sri Guru Charana Padma. <laughs> Sadeva 
He's giving this prashad. The prashad that's coming from the lotus feet of Sri Guru is this attachment, the one pointed love to Srimati Radhika. And when we get more and more of this prashad, the mercy of this love, the honey of this lotus feet, we're always standing in the service of Srimati Radhika. Then we can leave behind all the material bhavas, the material feelings. Because the feelings that we get when we serve these sweet lotus feet is so much more relishable than all the yearnings for love and understanding that we have here in this temporary world. And sometimes, of course, Sri Guru was also chastising. It's not always that uh, the mother of devotion, Sri Guru, that it's not always only sugar candy. Sometimes also, no, this is not the right way. Please return. Good, if there's navigation. But sometimes navigation is also Please go back. You have to go back and you have to look at this again and you have to work on your ego and you have to do it in this way and not in this way. This is also prashad. This is also a mercy to be sometimes in this feeling of Oh my God, now Gurudev has smashed me. In front of everyone, he has made me a fool. Wonderful, thank you Gurudev. Some more false ego is gone and I can advance. And Sri Guru, oh this I love also. Is called Sri because Sri is the treasure of prey. So who is this person who has all the treasure of prey? It is our dear Shimati Radhika. She is the treasure house of prey, of love. She has all these feelings in her service. And Sri Guru is connecting me with this as a maid servant of Srimati Radhika. I remember once they were speaking with Sri Narayan Maharaj. When does this Raganuga Bhakti relationship start with Sri Guru? When do we really come into this intimacy, into this close feelings with Sri Guru? Because we try to serve Srila Prabhupada. We try to do programs, we are preaching, we are selling books, we are speaking about the philosophy. And they were discussing back and forth. This is a hidden path of devotion, right? You remember this. 
And then they were going like this and then like this. We love Prabhupada. We love him. We love him. Yes. And then Srila Narayan Maharaj said, if you know, if your Gurudev has personally told you who he is in relationship to Radha Krishna, which Mandari she is, and if you can serve her in that level or in that feeling, then you have entered into Raga Nukapacha. Is it clear? <laughs> and then they said, yes, it's clear. So by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we are practicing, trying to aspire for this. And Sri Guru is so important to nourish these feelings because she is like a lotus. Sri Guru is like a lotus flower. She is in this material world, but she is not of this material world. We could say the same about us, but my realization on this is very small. It's ping pong, like Gurudev said, it's flickering. It's sometimes there and sometimes dull. Like when we have a plant and we not always water it and it's very hot, then the plants will soak. But Shiguru is always deeply rooted in her bhakti to Srimati Radhika. So we can measure also how deep is my bhakti, how much am I connected to Shri Guru in this deepest, deepest level of service? Do I really have any interest to know what is my service to Radha Mohan? My eternal service? Or am I still in this external consciousness, I have initiation. I am chanting my rounds. I am offering the food. And that's it. It's more like a formal thing than this is also very good. It is, uh, it is well done. It is bravo. That is our process. It's our development. But to go deeper, we need some greed. We need this loba, which is not the loba on the material platform. On the material platform also I have greed. I want to look good. I want to have a nice house. I want to have a nice garden with many flowers. That is looking beautiful. I want to have enough food, this and that, whatever I want. But the spiritual greed is that which will really connect us to Sri Guru. That spiritual greed is also loba. I have to be greedy. Greedy means beg, borrow or steal means I will do anything to get this. Gurudev, I am helpless. I'm a fool, number one. I'm still living in these gunas. I'm a ping pong. But anyway, Gurudev, give me your mercy. Please, reveal to me what is your deepest heart connection to Srimati Radhika. And please, from this heart connection, Gurudev, Will you give one drop of greed that I can also desire to do a little bit of service? Will you connect me to Srimati Radhika and give me my eternal name and give me my eternal form and the color of my dress? Can I be so greedy? 
that I dare to ask you about this. Because I know you are the treasure house. You are full of jewels. But for the treasure house, we need a lock. We need to lock the unlock the the, the the door. We have to open the treasure house. We have to have a key. And the key is at the same time a little bit paradox. <laughs> Because we have to be like humble, very humble. We have to accept everything that comes and we have to go through all the lessons. But at the same time, we have to be greedy. Yes, good. If, even if I am so fallen or so unqualified, please let me, help me in my way to come into this inner service and to, in my sadhaka daya, in my spiritual practice, also go inside. Can we meet there, Gurudev? You are Sri Guru. You are the treasure house of this biggest jewels of love of Shrimati Radhika and Mohan. Will you also maybe let me have a little glimpse in your treasure house and will you if I have a little bit of greed this like unexpected greed wie sagt man auf Deutsch entgegen Gesetz täglicher Vernunft it's without reason because somebody as fallen as me has no qualification. But then again, that is the qualification, isn't it? <laughs> so. Rati, can I ask something in this connection? Yeah, very good. Juhu! <laughs> what is your experience about, I was always also thinking about it's greed, but it's also um, patience somehow. Isn't it? And to balance this, what is your experience about this? Yeah, this is a very good point, uh, Raja Sundari. Because greed is uh, needed, but at the same time, patience is needed. Would he have said to me when I was in these impatient moments? <laughs> uh, I come now. What is happening? I I don't feel anything. <laughs> I don't feel anything, and I'm so greedy. <laughs> Then he said to me, "You cannot press mercy." I think it's an inner, you know, it's these things, they, you know, this real greed is not external. It's like an inner fire that's burning inside. And this fire needs good fuel. And the fuel is my own other. So also a question of ripeness. Is it also reife? Yeah, yeah. I think it is. It is. Um, it's a. It's a. It's a paradox that to be so greedy and at the same time be so patient, and that's why it says that it's poison and nectar, because sometimes some drops are coming, and then again the dryness comes. It's the waves, no? it goes up and down. It's not always, oh, I'm so greedy and now the flow is constant. There's also these times where I feel I need uh, more mercy to be able to be, you know, feeling 
because I also at the same time feel my blockages. And Gurdjie was giving speech last classes when he said that in Vilap Kushmanjali there is one purport where this is explained, where Anantadas Babaji is explaining this development. No? Of course, it's all ripening, but yeah, we have to exchange. It's good to, to share this. Oh my God, I'm so dry at the moment. I pray for one drop of mercy. And it's not only Shiguru in person. Shiguru is coming through many, many. You know, Shiguru is everywhere. Nitai. Nitai is everywhere. Guru Tattva is all the reading. So if I feel dry, then I can go many places to my god brothers, god sisters, to any other sadhus. I can go in front of Takaji. I go to many places to listen to the classes, to go Kirtan. To At the same time, I must be so greedy that even if I have so much endeavors, that I feel that they are never enough. <laughs> and usually devotees, they know very well this feeling. Like Gurdiv said, I think yesterday, it's a helpless feeling. But this helplessness is guiding us to more patience. And sometimes we are relaxed and we feel, oh, I'm in the lap of my mama and she will take care of me. And sometimes we are not so relaxed. We are more in the external um, perception of ourselves and we feel, my God, I should do more. I can never do enough. <laughs> it's the waves of the feelings and I think it's a good sign that we have this impatience. But at the same time, when the humility comes again, and this, yes, I have to wait. I cry more, I die more. My inner death, my inner purifications. Waiting like a chakora bird. That's why. We always have this example of this Chakora bird that uh, they only live on rain water. They don't take anywhere else. And if they if they are very thirsty, they will only take through rain water. I think. Uh, Very good beginning. I feel blessed to be together with you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Gordy, for giving us this chance to get more greedy and get more needy for the grid. <laughs> so beautiful, class. I was from beginning. <laughs> wow, so great.